Nothing brings me joy and puts me in a state of zen quite like being outside and doing wood builds. So when all of the craft buddies asked for more Christmas whiskey wood builds, I was right there on it. So come along today. We are going to do some that are easy, budget friendly, and they're also great to either keep, gift, or sell. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge thank you to my whiskey craft buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. I am so thankful for you guys and if you want to join us, hit subscribe down below so you won't miss any future DIY or budget home decor videos. Now let's get building. As anybody else like me, you take a look around your garage around Thanksgiving and realize you have way too much scrap wood than you know what to do with. Well, that was my motivation for today's video. I'm going to try to use up a lot of my scrap, but don't worry, all this stuff can easily be found inexpensively at the hardware store if you don't have a scrap pile like me. This first one, you can take whatever piece of scrap wood you have or cut down something and grab some of these wood snowmen. The smaller ones are from Dollar Tree, $1.25 for a ton of them, and I was able to get the six pack of large ones from Hobby Lobby for $2.50 for six of them. I just added some wood glue, but you can also use super glue gel that works on wood as well and glue the bottom of the snowman to your board. I like to use a clamp for safe measure, but you can just use another board or something to put some weight on it. Then you're going to finish it off with any paint or stain that matches your decor. And I love that these are so versatile and unless you look super close, you would not guess that those are snowmen. They just look like chunky farmhouse legs, which I love. Now, the reason I made these right now is to help with our Christmas village. I have some buildings that sit too far into our fake snow and it drives me nuts. So I decided to flip the snow back, add a riser, and it really helps lift up all those different pieces. Then you kind of have different levels and different areas of interest throughout your setup. I also like using it for general decor. This is how I used it in my elf setup from my last video, and it just really helps give a lot of visual intrigue. I used that same methodology, but instead I grabbed a longer board this time. This is probably a two by eight by three. It was ripped down by a table saw, but you can use whatever you have. And I took some of these wood caps that I had just to give it a little teeny raise. Then I used some clamps just like I did last time, stained it early American, and I did that color because I wanted it to match our new table. I will show you at the end of this video how we built that, so stay tuned to see that all come together. But I love this runner down the center because it gives me a great place to decorate all year long. Then to decorate for the holidays, I grabbed some picks, fairy lights, some wood beads, and these beautiful gingerbread houses. The big one is from Marshall's, the small ones are from Michael's, and this is such a fun and festive setup, and I can use this year round. For this next one, we're going to grab some scrap two by four. And these pieces are ones that I already had, but you can definitely cut them down. You want one small, two medium, and a large. I decided to paint all of them white and then do a little distressing with a baby wipe and some antique wax. But you could also use brown paint or leave it non-distressed. Totally up to you. Then I cut out these shapes on my Cricut. And if you don't have a Cricut, you can print these out as a PNG file with your printer, then cut them out, trace them onto the wood, and then you can paint them in because they're really simple shapes. So you can do that if you don't have a Cricut. But if you do have a Cricut, you can just size them to two and a half inches wide, apply them, and you have this beautiful rustic take on a nativity set that didn't cost you much at all, especially if it's scrap. Now that we're in the thick of the holiday season, it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, but for some, the holidays can be tough and stressful. I've been super open about my struggles with seasonal depression and anxiety, and they get worse during the winter. So that made me wanna restart therapy sessions through BetterHelp, and a huge thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp can match you with one of their 30,000 licensed therapists using a questionnaire to assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you'll be matched with someone in 48 hours, and then you can schedule times for your sessions that are convenient for you. I became an advocate for therapy back in 2020 after having Finn and learning that I had postpartum depression. It was a really dark time for me and talking to somebody that was trained to listen and also give unbiased advice really helped me with the way that I processed my thoughts and my therapist gave me coping tools like looking at my intrusive thoughts and really being able to figure out what was actually fact in there really, really helped me and it was a game changer. With BetterHelp, you can schedule therapy sessions as a video call, a phone call, or even messaging at times that work best for you. And what I've learned is it's so important to make sure you find the right therapist. So if the first one isn't a good fit, you can switch and find a new one that's a better fit at no additional cost. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and happier life. If you think you could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash whiskeywit or click the link down in the description 
and that will give my craft buddies 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can get matched with a therapist and see if it could help you too. Something else I like to do around Christmas is stay connected with friends and family, and that really helps me enjoy the season and not get too much in my head. So this next project is actually inspired by one of my best friends here on YouTube, Courtney, over at Creative on the Cheap, who talked about this at our Pinners event. As part of our extra projects, she let people know that you could take an 18-inch wood round, a 6-inch Lazy Susan, and some felt pads and make a really pretty Lazy Susan. So I decided to make a hybrid between the Lazy Susan and a tray. I started by taking my wood round that I got from Menards and staining it to match my house because we're going to decorate it for the season and then be able to use it year round. Then I got my six inch hardware, added it, made sure it was centered on my board, and then I used three quarter inch flathead screws to attach it. I wanted to make sure that the screws were going to sit flush so it didn't impede anything with the lazy susion. Then I decided to put my felt tips on last just so it didn't get covered with all the gunk that was on my work table in my garage. And then I'm using gate pulls, but you could use honestly any cabinet hardware. I just like that you can screw these right in. You don't have to put holes in the bottom and go up through it. It is just gonna go right into the wood. I like to drill pilot holes. And then when I'm screwing these in, I go in about 75%. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room to make everything centered. And then I go through and do the last 25% on all of them. It just helps everything line up. Then my last step was to add my little felt pads and then you can also add a sealant if you plan to put a lot on top of it, especially if you painted or stenciled it, I would definitely recommend a spray or wipe on sealant. This project would be a great gift. You could monogram it with a stencil. You could also paint it. It would also be fun with like a football or sports teams logo for entertaining. There are so many possibilities with this one. A huge thank you to Courtney and I hope I did you proud. I've wanted to build this tree shelf for some time now, and the plans are adapted from my bestie, Anna White. We're not really besties. She doesn't know I exist, but I think she's my bestie. The hardest part about this plan is cutting the beveled edges, but all you have to do is adjust your saw to the side, and then you can cut it just like a straight cut. Obviously, you want to make sure you are being super careful and making sure you're not cutting too small of pieces to keep your fingers back. I like to cut the smaller pieces off the end of a larger piece, so I've got room to keep my hand back. I will link the plan down below so you can find all of the cuts and everything, and I just omitted the bottom shelf. Something to keep in mind, too, when you're cutting is she's going to tell you that you need to have a length from short point to long point, which looks like this. And then long point to long point, which looks like this, almost like a parallelogram. So just a little tip as you're reading that plan. Once I gave it a quick sand, it was time to assemble. And I'm going to share with you the real truth of building this shelf. You guys know it turned out because you saw the shot at the beginning, but it came with a couple bloopers. So at first, I almost stuck the wrong piece on there because I wasn't paying attention. Error number one. Then I was trying to get a good angle to put my nails into the wood. I did this, it popped out, didn't hook, and then at one point I accidentally nailed it to the table. I didn't get footage of that. But let me tell you, I make mistakes as well. We're gonna press on and we're gonna make this happen. So basically you're going to make these like parallelograms that stack on top of each other and flush each side with wood glue and nails. Anna White also has a video. It's a lot more eloquently stated than this one because I kind of fumbled through it. But like I said, we made it. Now, I was feeling pretty good at this point. I was like, I'm rocking and rolling. I got all my pieces added. Then I get to the top and I realize that I just completely made a wrong cut. It was just way too short. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know how I got there. Nonetheless, here we are. So I went back to my saw, cut the right size, and then I was able to assemble the top of the shelf. So other than a few operator errors, I was pretty proud of myself that this thing was done. On her version, there's a bottom shelf as well as some plywood on the back. I omitted both of those because I just liked the open look. Now this is beautiful on its own. You could have this just be decor, but I really like having the shelves and this would make an amazing advent calendar. That time is coming up, December is inching closer, so that is probably what I would use it for if I didn't have an idea in mind when I built it. When I put this plan on the list originally, I thought this would be perfect for my Griswold memorabilia. Obviously, like I tell you, this is just a chunk of what I have. I need to get the whole thing set up. That just, it's an adventure to do that. But this is awesome for my Hallmark ornaments. This fits perfectly on the table that I set everything up. And now that I've gotten a lot more tchotchkes and little trinkety things, ornaments, etc., 
everything fits so well on the shelf. I can't wait to get this set up fully and I will be sure to share that when that's done. But like I said, it's been a process and I need a little more time. Here's another idea to use one of those 18 inch wood rounds. We're gonna start by finding the center of our wood round and then we're gonna create the base of a peppermint. All you need to do is from that starting point, create like a little curvature mark and use pencil because you can erase and reconfigure. You just wanna make sure you have an even number. I did 10. I went through and painted every other one white and made sure to get the edges and then I followed up with red. I did a larger paintbrush in the center to make it quicker and then I went back through with a little detailed brush to mesh it with the white. And then you can leave it as is, but I decided to add some whimsy fun to it. I actually saw this done by the blog Refabbed and thought it was gorgeous. So I decided to try my hand at the painting technique. She did dots down parts of the little swooshes on the whites. And then she went in with some pink, white, and red to add just some little swooshes, I guess you would call them. And it really makes it fun, whimsy, and feel very Candyland. Once that was fully dry, I flipped it over and added these legs from Amazon. These are just little side table legs and I thought that they were perfect. I was originally just going to do a stained version, but I thought this one was so much more fun for Christmas and I have an idea for you on how you could get more use out of it. But before I tell you that, be sure to seal it because you don't want your paint to chip. I like this spray matte sealant. So each leg came with eight screws and it was actually really taut with four. So what I'm going to do is leave the additional eight so that when Christmas is over, I can just remove the legs and then put this blank, like plain one on top. So then I've got the matte black legs with that on top. And then all I have to do is save the wood round and store that versus having to store a whole table. So you get Christmas as well as other seasons. You could customize this with logos, you could do your family monogram. You could just do some lines, tons of options, but I'm gonna leave mine blank and it's gonna be versatile all year round. So there you have it. This will get all of its Christmas joy and Christmas magic. And then come January, I can swap it out for the darker wood and then it'll be great for everyday decor. This would also be awesome for a smaller space for a tree stand and I just love how it came out. If you are a frequent viewer of the Whiskey Wood Build Projects, you know I love a good box. And I made these earlier in the year out of fence pickets and I wanted to make some more because I think these are great for gifts. Not only do they look really pretty to hold the gifts or Christmas basket, but then the person can use it for the rest of the year for storage because who doesn't need more storage? And you can make these for under 10 bucks. You're gonna need some fence pickets as well as some one by two furring strips. To the pickets, you want four pieces at 13 and a half as well as 13 inches, two at 12 inches, and then your one by twos, you're gonna do six at 10 and a half and then two more at 13 and a half. I stained everything ahead of time just to make it easier and then I started to assemble my base. We're going to line up two of the 10 and a half inch furring strips with the 13 and a half inch furring strip and use some one and a quarter inch brad nails to create a base. You want your pieces to be flush with one side of that 13 inch board. Then we're going to grab our 13 and a half inch long fence pickets and you want to make sure that you have the grain and stain pattern that you want to be on the outside so think about that before you nail it down you're going to make the second side so just do all of that over again and then we're going to take our 13 inch wide pieces and create the other side so you've got four of these as well you can go right into that one by two or into the other fence picket just make sure this time you're using one inch nails you can also use wood glue but honestly i've only used nails for these in the past and it held up just fine but that's totally personal preference i like to do one side then add it to the other side flip it over and then do the back side then to give it more rigidity you're going to take those last two one by twos which are ten and a half inches slide them right in either side and use a nail gun to hook them back in now this part is either perfect or just a little bit off and it depends on how much your fence pickets decide to move i had to trim down my 12 inch piece just a little bit i used a jigsaw just because it was a lot easier than getting out my big saw to trim it down but if you don't stain ahead of time you can cut as you go i'm going to nail that down and then the last step is totally optional but i'm going to add some hardware i am going to do handles on either side and i like to use the painter's tape trick stick it down so you know right where the holes need to go you can measure do the whole thing front and back and then you can drill your holes for your hardware 
Once I screwed in the hardware, this thing was good to go. Not only would it be beautiful for Christmas decor, but like I said, I'm going to be using these for gifts. This is Finn's little Christmas basket, and I'm so excited to give it to him on December 1st. He's got some little limited edition goldfish. Those things are dangerously delicious. This elf book and plushie from Kohl's, as well as some books from Walmart. And the paper in the back is from Viola Grace for Home Alone. We love Christmas movies at our house. All the details will be linked down in the description if you want to shop. Every year when I share this sign next to my nativity, my two main questions are, did you make the manger scene? Yes, I did. I will have that video linked for you. And did you make that sign next to it? Yes, I also did. And I will show you how to do that now. This is a really quick and easy project with a stencil. You're going to want to size the SVG file that I share over on my blog for free to fit your sign as if you were putting a decal on, but we are going to do a fun technique. We're going to go through and weed. This is permanent vinyl. It's just scrap vinyl that I had on hand because we're going to use it as a reverse stencil. You can also cut little pieces as you go if it's a little too intricate. And this is a one by eight board, again, from my scrap pile that I had already stained. Then I'm using paper transfer tape to apply it to my sign. And sometimes when you go to stick vinyl on a stained surface, it doesn't stick. And sometimes it's a huge pain. So you can give yourself a coat of either polycrylic or Mod Podge first to give it something to stick to. And then once you get that decal on there, we are going to seal it with Mod Podge over the top again. Let that completely dry. And then I decided to go over the top with a white paint. That way it is going to be a primarily white sign with the stained words showing through. Because that Mod Podge sealed it down, you're going to be able to go directly over the top of the sign and you can use a brush. You don't have to be super duper careful. Let that dry about 75% of the way so you aren't smearing the paint, but I like to do it before it's fully, fully dry. Call me impatient or call me smart so it doesn't rip up the other paint. Either way works. And then we're going to carefully remove all those little bits to reveal this beautiful sign. You can either leave it as it is, or you can cut a frame. All you need to do is cut one by twos to the exact width of the top and bottom of your sign. And then you're going to want two pieces that fully stretch on either side. I love this sign. It's the perfect size for my nativity. This is the willow tree set. I got it secondhand a couple years ago, and I absolutely love it. This time of year when all my stuff is set up, but I haven't completed my Christmas shopping, my trees look a little bare, so I decided to use some scrap wood to create some presents. This is a one by eight, but again, you could use two bys, you could use honestly any wood that you have, two by fours, etc. I'm gonna stain it, and then I'm going to cover one side completely in Mod Podge. Let it fully dry, and then we are gonna use heat to re-engage this to use the cardstock. This is just some pretty poinsettia cardstock, but you could use regular wrapping paper. You can also do this with tissue paper. Because the surface is big, I decided to use my big heat press, but you could also use an iron or a small press. Heat it up, re-engage that Mod Podge, and it is going to make it so it is completely flat. You're not going to have any of those wet bubbles, which is wonderful. Then this is just some ribbon that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby that I'm cutting down to fit what I need. And I'm using some hot glue and tying techniques as well as creating a bow to go over the top. You don't always have to tie the bow on the same string or the same piece of ribbon you can glue it make your bow and then glue the bow on it's a nice way that i like to make it kind of sit exactly where i want it to every time because i'm not fancy enough to tie it and get it to stay where i need it then once your present is all ready to go you can make some more you can make larger ones i also did this with a really big two by eight scrap and put it out of my front porch so ever since we moved into this house, I have been planning on building a dining room table for our dining room because in our last house, we only needed one table and now we need two. So I went to Home Depot with my brother. We picked out some wood and we're going to assemble this so we have it for hosting Thanksgiving. And then I also have a table that we're using now that has six chairs that I want to paint black eventually. Not sure that's going to happen in time for Thanksgiving, but the chairs definitely function and every DIY project can't be quickly done. Sometimes it takes time, but I'm so excited to get this table built. So let me bring you along. Because I was on a time crunch and I wanted this done by Thanksgiving, we headed to Home Depot to see what they had. And I also brought my brother because he was going to help me. And he is also super meticulous and really good at woodworking. What is this called, Reed? Southern Yellow Pine. Fancy table, here we come. 
We're making sure to check the grain of the board and we're also checking to make sure that it is straight. There aren't any huge chunks out of it. And sometimes to do that at a big box store like this, you gotta take them out. You gotta sit them on the floor. You gotta figure out what you need. I was crawling in there to grab it. We came out victorious and we were able to get the lumber for the table. Asked him if he would help me because I don't have a table saw. So lean on your friends or relatives, anybody that you know that has tools. Nine times out of 10, they will be willing to help you make what you wanna make if you can't do it yourself. My lumber cost ended up being under $80 plus the legs, which I'll show you in a minute, but all of this wood was like 78 bucks with tax, which was so nice for a dining room table. Now, obviously you need the tools to put this together. And this is a plan that I'm following to the T from shantytochic.com. I usually don't do their plans a whole lot because you usually need a lot bigger of tools than what you need from Anna White, but I fell in love with the fact that these builds that they were sharing had big chunky farmhouse legs and so I recruited my brother to see if he would help me and as you can tell here he's doing a majority of the heavy lifting. We followed everything to the plans, got everything cut down, and my brother did a good amount of it for me. He also labeled it so I knew what went where so when I was drilling pocket holes it made it a lot quicker and easier. Huge shout out to my brother. He is a real MVP and I'm super thankful to have him in my life. Then I recruited my other favorite guy, my husband Alex, to help me put all the pieces together. The top is a planked tabletop and that's why it's helpful to cut with the table saw, just then that way you've got really nice and clean edges. We make a really good team. We have built a lot of stuff for our house together, like our bed, our nightstands, a bunch of stuff. So if you watch my wood build project video, mostly everything we've built in our house, we've done together and you'll see him in those videos. Once everything was hooked together, we waited on the breadboards and I made sure to sand everything down to make sure the ends were flush, flat, everything. I started with a hundred grit, then I did a 150 and then a 220. So it's the next day and I'm doing some more finishing on this table. I just want to make sure that it's going to last a long time and it's finished really nicely. And not that I don't finish like my wood signs as nicely, but this is definitely a different caliber of project. Now, if you're planning on doing something like this with the Craig jig, something I didn't have until I bought it from my brother is this face clamp from Craig. I will definitely be purchasing one of these or adding it to my Christmas list. This just really helped hold everything flush when we screwed it together. And then I also went over the top with 100 grit sandpaper and that helped get all of any imperfections, like just like a 16th of an inch, if it didn't line up, sand it all down. And I also rounded the edges of the table, one because my brother suggested it so it doesn't chip off as easily, which I thought was really smart. But the other great thing is that if it's rounded, thin is going to have way less chance of getting hurt. And then we chose Early American as the stain that matches a lot of things that we have in our house. We started with the back and then flipped it over and we're just putting this on our plastic pop-up sawhorses just to get it off the floor. This is when I really started to get excited. Now I hope to have a ton, ton, ton of gatherings over this table. So I wanted to make sure it was protected. I love this Verithane triple thick coating polycrylic. It is self-leveling. I did it on the back and then I ended up doing three coats on the top just to make sure it was really protected just because I know somebody will spill something on it. One other thing we did at the bottom of the legs was just add these self-leveling little, I don't know, nubs, little felt pieces. What you can do is once they're in there, you can twist them to make them longer or shorter. And some places in our house aren't completely level with the floors. And so it's nice to have those so your table doesn't wobble. So got these super cheap at Home Depot and I will link them down below if you want to add that to your table too. And then it was assembly day. We assembled everything according to the plans in the video from Shani to Chic. It was such a straightforward build. And honestly, it took some time, but it was very easy and required other than the table saw for assembly very minimal tools. I had everything else that I needed. We got the legs and the stringer on there and then we carried in our tabletop, made sure it was centered on the legs and then Alex went under the table to use the pocket holes to drill up into the tabletop to make sure everything stayed in place. After all of that, we were super exhausted but nothing made my heart feel warmer than seeing Finn christen it with a car. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, these chairs are going to be painted. I got them secondhand and they are beat to all heck. So I do need to 
refinish them. I wanted to make sure they were going to fit on the table. And I absolutely love the additional leg room that this gives us for our dining room. I cannot wait to bring you along for that next round of projects. So be sure to stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my chair painting and then just an overall update of that room. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down below which project you plan on recreating. And a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. You guys know I am a huge mental health advocate, so I was so happy to partner with them and share more information about their platform to see if it could be a good fit for you. So you can head to betterhelp.com slash whiskeywit or click the link down below. They're giving my craft buddies 10% off your first month so you can get matched with a therapist and see if maybe that's something that could help you too, especially if the holidays are rough or you've just been having a hard time. Therapy was one of the best decisions that I ever made. It was hard to get going, but once I decided to do it, it was such a game changer. Be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future video. And also happy Thanksgiving to all that are celebrating this week. I am so, 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 so thankful for my crafting community, my craft buddies, and I can't wait for what's next. Catch you in the next one.